to witness the way that fish came to the surface and beat down on that bait, man, that really is such a treat. You don't get to see it every day. It truly is something special and really it's a fish of a lifetime. Welcome to this week's podcast of Florida Fishing Showcase with your host, Ryan Collins. So this week we're talking about uh, fishing down in Duck Key, the Yellowfin Owners Tournament, fishing out of the beautiful Hawks Cay Resort. This weekend I had the opportunity of fishing with Logan's Revenge, um, an iconic boat out of the Bradenton, Sarasota area. So I get down to the dock at Hawks Cay at the boat slip, and the first thing, like always, you got to go get grab ice. Load the boat down with ice, get a couple chum box, grab a couple packs of Ballyhoo. Um, we were looking to go out there, um, seeing what we couldn't find. Looking to run in towards the Atlantic, um, looking to go anywhere from you know six to thirteen miles offshore, depending on where the bite was. Now to set the background for this, um, you know we had had bad weather, rough weather for the last week and a half, really. So the water had been dirty, the water in the reefs had been dirty. Bottom fishing wasn't the best. Um, there were good reports of mahi being caught all around, um, but still at the same time, you needed to find those birds and find the bait. So once we got a couple blocks of chum. We got a couple packs of Ballyhoo in the boat. Once we had all the ice loaded down in the boat, it was time to go. Rig up the popping chuggers on the way out there. Um, we marked the spot on the graph. We head out into the Atlantic. The plan was to run, like I said, about six, seven miles offshore, see if we couldn't get lucky, see if the fish were around, see if the bait was around, see if we couldn't locate some birds, stay on top of the fish. Um, so we ran about four miles offshore and started seeing bait everywhere. So we figured, you know, with the reports of the fish being caught um, within the last previous four days, you know, very good sign. The fish might be here. The fish might be biting. But the one thing we struggled to find was birds. There weren't too many birds on that first four to five miles. We didn't see anything. We were looking for birds, looking for the schoolies, trying to find the bait. We couldn't find anything else really besides flying fish. They, they were everywhere. Uh, but we did struggle to find birds, no tweenies, and especially no frigates. So if you can't find the frigates, you're probably not going to find the fish. We were running out on the high tide. High tide was in, a, in a two hours or so as it was an incoming tide. We hit about six miles and we did start to see a little bit of bait. Still no birds, so we kept going. Now at this point, after not seeing any birds within that first six miles, you know, we started to get a little nervous. We set up. We might not be able to catch any fish. There might not be anything out here. Maybe this wind's too strong. Maybe the previous fronts really clouded up this water. Maybe the fish just aren't here. Maybe the bait isn't around. So we decided to push on and keep going out there and see if we couldn't still come across some type of birds, some type of structure. Who knew? Maybe there was a weed line floating. Maybe there was some debris, an overhang, whatever it may be, you know, hanging around that water. We might have found some fish. So we decided to keep pushing. <laughs> but luckily we did. And uh, as we kept pushing out there we hit about eight or nine miles and then we did we located a few birds we finally saw a couple tweenies and of course we saw a frigate and whenever you do see a frigate out there usually they're on some type of bait um, and it wasn't too long after we started heading in that direction to see if we couldn't you know find some fish underneath that bird you know and um, we spotted one frigate at about eight miles <laughs> and that's when the magic happened right then um, we went over, we saw a couple tweenies following it, we headed in that direction, and not moments later did we have a boiling spearfish at the side of the boat. A nice big boil at the surface, beautiful, beautiful colors. You see that dark violet um, that it's recognizable for, and it's short bill. You know, it's a cousin of the marlin and sailfish family. So it's got that shortened bill with a really wide body and all that dark violet in its dorsal and all along its side. It's gorgeous, gorgeous fish, you know, and it, that's something you don't come across all the time. So that was a gift out there, and it was awesome to see it come up right next to the boat, have, you know, no fear of the boat at all, <laughs> and just, just chase these flying fish right in front of the boat. So at that point, Wiley runs to the back of the boat. I take over driving. We pitch a few flat lines out there, see if we can't tease this spearfish back up behind the boat, see if we can't get him to commit on a bait. The way those fish are, the way things happen, they, they're so quick out there. If you don't have it ready to fire down, fire at them, pitch it out there. Um, you know, those fish are usually on their way and they're gone. So essentially that, that fish kept moving on, that torpedoed right off into the deep blue. And even though we circled it a few times, we circled the spot, we marked it on the graph and we, we trolled it and uh, put a couple flat lines out. We were hoping maybe we could get him to come back and bite and commit. Um, he just, he wasn't there. Um, but that's, you know, that's the beauty of going out there. You never really know what you can see. I mean, 
that's a fish almost of a lifetime. Very few people will come across that fish themselves, let alone in the Keys. Um, so that's an awesome opportunity. It was such a great fish to see. Um, although we didn't hook it, uh, it's really hard to beat it. Uh, the fact that, that fish came right next to the boat, you know, he was showing himself. He was just kind of toying with us, really. <laughs> to see that fish come up the side of the boat, boil like he did, not even five feet off the bow, and just, you know, beat down on a couple flying fish with its shortened bill, um, you know, th I, that makes the trip. Although we weren't able to catch that fish and, you know, get hands on it, tag it, get hands on a leader, it's almost just as rewarding sometimes being able to see it. Like I said, you don't find that fish out in the Keys very much, and when you do, you know, it's a rarity. Um, a lot of people will see sailfish, you know, you get lucky if you go out deep enough and get a marlin, swordfish, they're all there. Um, but to come across the actual spearfish itself, um, you know, it, it's kind of a fish of a lifetime. And I think a lot of people, you know, might not understand how rare it is to really find that fish out there. You know, kind of the funny thing about seeing that spearfish and the, the way that all kind of played out, I was staring at the graph and I was looking at the the spot we had marked in an additional three miles, um, a big contour, a nice drop off. And that's where I was kind of expecting whether we would see maybe some type of sailfish, you know, um, sorts of birds, um, some pelagics hanging around, maybe find a school of bait, you know, um, even find, you know, a floating pallet or a weed line. That's really where we were all kind of betting on where we were going to see the fish. And, uh, you know, it wasn't long after I looked at that graph and said, huh, we only got about another really two and a half miles until we're at that spot is that's when the spearfish came up to the side of the boat and showed himself, you know, and came up and just started beating down on that flying fish and really put on a show for us right there. But I think there's something to be said about that because when I was looking at the graph and actually, you know, cross-referencing the tides, uh, it makes a lot of sense to me now going back at it and thinking about it because essentially that tide wasn't quite at its peak yet and it would have been just hitting the first high tide within the next hour. You know, it makes sense that fish might have been, you know, a little bit more shallow, waiting for that water to rise, being on the back side of that structure, which I originally thought he would have been at the structure. So from that standpoint, you know, it makes a little more sense why he might have been there. In addition, the bait, you know, was there and we did find that bird. And that one bird was a telltale sign of some type of fish and some type of bait. And usually, you know, that's how it plays when you're out there. I mean, the beauty of being there in Duck Key, you know, usually you only have to run about six miles offshore to find birds, to find bait, to find the fish, to find the pelagics that all hang around and live in that nutrient rich water. So after that spearfish had moved on and was long gone, <laughs> you know, we decided obviously to keep moving on. Um, we thought that fish, you know, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, those birds, you know, might've been holding some more fish, some more bait. So we did a couple circles and after that, um, you know, we decided just to put out a couple flat lines troll. We figured, hey, we saw a few birds here. Obviously there was a bigger predatory fish so why not toss out a few bait, baits? There might be something hanging around. So we, we put out a few flat lines. We put the uh, popping chug, chugger out there and a ballyhoo, skirted ballyhoo, tossed it all out there, and we went on the troll. Um, now, the plan was, again, to head southeast. Um, and at this point, we decided we were just going to continue to head a little more south than southeast. Um, and as we did that, um, we started trolling around, and uh, we did. We came across some more bait. We were able to locate the birds. Um, obviously another telltale sign we found an additional frigate um, as soon as we got underneath that bird you know like clockwork we had a few mahi come up behind the boat with smaller schoolies that we found chewing on the ballyhoos took the rods out handed them to the kids let the kids reel them in but the kids had a blast doing it you know it's such an acrobatic fish um, and even when you see that fish come behind the boat you know there's such a colorful target to, to pitch at to throw I mean you can even sight fish them when they get all excited behind the boat and uh, like we did, we had a, a, a chum block out as we slowed down and we tried to attract those fish, the schools to move in. And uh, once we did, you know, it was, it was game on, lights on. And all the kids started jumping to the back of the boat. You know, I was passing rods around, um, baiting hooks, telling them, hey, you know, wait till you see that fish. Once he heads in that direction, obviously lead the fish, pitch it out in front of him. Competition's fierce in those schools. So as soon as that bait hits the water, a lot of times it tends to be the smallest fish that goes for the bait first. Um, because, you know, he, he wants to eat too. He wants to get big like his brothers and sisters. So the biggest thing is waiting for that bowl to come around. Let the chum, you know, do its job. Let the chum, you know, distract those little fish and take care of their uh, short attention span. But as that big bowl, that cow swims back behind that school, waiting for the moment to strike, that's what you want to key on. And I was trying to tell the kids, that's what you want to do. Wait for those schoolies to get up really close to the boat. And then you wait for that big bowl to, you know, make his move. And once he does, lead that big bowl, put that bait on the water, 
let it sink for just a second, give it a little action, whether it's dead or alive, a little pop, usually <laughs> they'll come right up to it and suck it down. And that's exactly what happened. We had one of the kids uh, wait, he did as I said, I pointed him to it, I instructed him, showed him right on the spot. As soon as that big bull came swimming around, um, you know, from behind the school, he, did, he actually made a wonderful cast, pitched it right out in front of the bull. The bull didn't even look twice, one, one shake of the tail and he was on the bait. And you know, that's really all it takes. And you know, when you're out there fishing, you know, anywhere from six to 10 miles offshore, you know, you have those opportunities to locate the bait, to find the birds, to find the fish. And you know, whenever that being the case, you know, you got a family out on the boat, you got your kids out on the boat, you know, you're down there for vacation, which is ideal. And you wanna take these kids out and show them a good time, show them a wonderful fishery, you know, put a rod in their hand and not let them get impatient with it, but let them see the colorful fish that are out there. Let them see the, you know, the tenacity of these little schoolies. And then, you know, even after all that, at the end of the day, take it home, you know, cook your catch and, you know, just enjoy a, a wonderful meal as well. Um, kind of show the kids, you know, that full circle, what it's really all about, the whole experience being out there. Um, and we were able to do that. And anytime you're able to go out there, you know, and have fun and show the kids an extra technique and have them enjoy that fishery and really, you know, cling to the sport and never want to put the rod down again. You know, that's what it's about. And uh, it was a, it was a, it was a great event for us. And obviously, there were some few other teams that placed and did really well, and there was a lot of other teams that you know struggled to find fish as well. Um, and a lot of that's accredited to the weather we had the weeks in the previous week. Like I said, the water had been really dirty over the reefs, and there's just really nothing you can do when it comes to the weather. So. Um, for a lot of teams, you know, it, it was a grind, and I don't know if a lot of teams caught fish, but, uh, you know, there were a few teams that did well. So, uh, either way, I think the event was fun, you know, it was for the kids, it was for the families, and that's what we're out there for, and it's always a pleasure and a blast when you can get out there and uh, take the youth and get them involved in the sport, um, and that's really what it's about. So, all set and done, you know, I think it was a wonderful trip, you know, seeing the spearfish was, you know, just a cherry on the top. It was, uh, you know, a little bit of a disappointment. We couldn't get that fish on the leader and a tag, but nonetheless, we saw it. And, you know, that's part of what it is all about being out there. It's just, you know, seeing the majestic beauty of the, the deep blue. And, you know, even when you get that fish on the boat, you know, getting that fish in the kid's hands, letting him see it, letting him feel it, you know, let him look at it and admire his own catch. You know, oh man, that's just what it's really all about. And, you know, once those kids have that experience, you know, that's something they hold on to. That's something they'll never forget. And it's an experience that can hook them forever, you know, that will bring them back here and, you know, in 20 years and they'll show their kids, you know, the way they caught fish and the way it was done. And, and, and when they were young and, you know, that's kind of part of the culture. You know, running out there wasn't too bad. You know, the fact that we were in Logan's Revenge, which, you know, the 42 center console, um, you know, it handles the waves pretty darn well. And I, you know, we can't really complain. A lot of people ended up not going out just because the weather was so rough and they were calling for four and five footers. Um, but you know, it turned out when we got out about, you know, six, seven miles, we didn't really see or experience too many, too many swells over, you know, four feet. I think that was really some of the bigger ones we saw. Now, like I said, being in that 42, we were able to cut right through it. The kids had no problem with it. And that's just a testament to the build of those yellow fins. Being in that yellowfin rig, you know, is what makes it fishable. It makes it enjoyable. You don't feel any waves, you know, it's, it rides like none other and simply it, it is the best, which allows for, you know, a wonderful, enjoyable experience for those kids out on the boat, going out there and being able to fish still and, you know, enjoying it and not anyone getting seasick. But luckily we were on that boat, so we didn't have to experience the rough weather. So we were able to run, you know, a little bit further than the rest of the field. And uh, with those Mercury racers behind us, you know, we were able to get out there quick, get on the spot. And I wouldn't doubt, you know, oh, I don't doubt, I firmly believe that part of the reason we were able to even, you know, lay eyes on that spearfish was because we were able to run out there, you know, in, in the early light, in the morning and get to the spot before everyone else while the fish were still feeding on that early morning twilight. As that was the case, not too long after did we see a spearfish, you know, boat side. And that's just really, you know, the beauty of getting out there quick and not having to deal with the, the, the rough weather and just being able to go out there and fish as those boats are intended to do. All around the board, it shouldn't have been too bad for anyone, but uh, it was a little bit rough and there probably were quite a few teams that went in early and went out um, a couple miles and said, nope, not today, and turned back around. So after we'd caught a few of those mahis, you know, swinging them over the gunnel 
and uh, slapped him right in the ice chest right there and iced him down. And, you know, we had dinner and lunch ready to go for the next couple of days uh, as we stayed there at the Hawks K, you know, take it right in. So if you ever get the opportunity to go, we always suggest you check it out. You do some fishing, bring your friends, bring your family, and just get to enjoy the fishery that's out there. All right, that's a wrap for this week's podcast. Um, thank you for tuning in to Florida Fishing Showcase.